Heidi Baker, and I'm a social worker. I work at Social Development in Woodstock with Child Protection Investigations. COVID-19 has impacted my role as a social worker. I have, since the pandemic began, I transitioned from working in office settings, being surrounded by my coworkers, to coming to my house and working from my room. I, I'm a child protection investigator, so before COVID-19, I would be going from house to house, knocking on doors, and going into the home and doing a, a house tour and checking everything I had to be able to, like to check, would have to check depending on what the concerns were, to coming up with um, different ways that I would be able to do this through technology. So in saying this, with the families that we work with, um, not always technology, like video, so it's been challenging that way, just trying to figure out like how to navigate how to do child protection social work through phone calls and and through um, video calls. Um, it's also we're responding to calls if it's imminent danger, so going into homes. But then again, when you go into homes, you have to ask all these COVID nineteen questions. So everything that used to be is no more. Where all our standards that we went by before, it kind of shifted so that we would be able to navigate through this pandemic in a safer way. Um, in saying this, COVID-19 also changed the way I work as a social worker where I'm not su surrounded by coworkers. So that can also be a lot on on someone who works in this kind of field. And it, it, it every day, it's, it's heavy work that we do. Therefore, like being able to be in an office and have your coworker right beside you. And if, you know, if you have a rough phone call or, you know, the, the phone call is not what you expected or, or it's something that kind of just makes you feel frustrated or emotional or what have you, you don't have that ability to just go down the hallway to debrief with another social worker. So that's been a big challenge as well from working inside my home and working like alone. Um, in summary, like it's impacted my role as a social worker in numerous different ways from working in a group setting to learning how to work from home. So that's been a big challenge. Being able to explain to clients how my role has changed and kind of making them understand in a way that's easy to understand, like how my work is going to look like. Or when I'm making that phone call, having people hang up on me, whereas if I show up at their door and knock on their door, they have no other choice but to let me, well, they're more so willing to let me in um, when it's face to face. Over the phone, it, they don't always have, to, they can just easily push the hang up button or they can avoid the call. Like it's changed tremendously from what I was used to in an office settings and transitioning back home. And then you have to think technology wise too, like I don't have access to a printer or I don't have access to the file room. So kind of just adapting and, and, and kind of learning this new route that this, it's a whole new way of social working. If that makes sense. I've had more time. I've been taking time at lunch to go for a walk, um, taking more time to go out into nature. I find that very therapeutic. Where working from home, I live in a rural community. So that way there, I'm able to go out and and spend that one hour lunch time that I have um, doing things that allow me to feel better because working from home, and like I said, you're working not around other social workers. So it's important to find ways to fill up your cup, whatever that may look like for for each social worker so making sure that you're taking care of you so that I, I find like in the past I guess we're going on eight or nine weeks of COVID-19 I've been doing things that's allowed me to to make sure that I'm staying on top of my mental health I've been connecting with colleagues talking with them more about how they're handling um, their work and what they're doing to stay on top of their mental health and like their well-being
I've been video calling family members to be able to stay in touch with them. Um, with a lack of like social connection and not being able to see people face to face or being in what you were used to, like a group settings, like an office settings, I've learned that it's very important human connection. What that may look like is different for everyone, but making sure that you are finding ways to connect with people during these isolating times. So to, to promote mental resiliency, I have been taking work day by day. There are some days that are so overwhelming and I think like, I used to think like two days ahead, like what am I gonna do like two days from now or if I had events to catch up on from going out to house visits, you know, I used to stress about not having those events right up to date. But like during these times, I've learned that with everything else going on, it's important to take your work day by day and to do what you can do. But be like at the same time, setting limits for yourself and setting boundaries and, and allowing yourself to have that break because we're working during a time that's not normal. And and that's, you know, it's a personal change as well as a work change. So you're going through things that you've never done, like never gone through before. So it's about being gentle with yourself, giving yourself breaks when breaks are needed. Um, if work becomes overwhelming, reaching out to colleagues or your supervisor and, and letting them know that you need a day off, which is today, it's Friday. Last two weeks, I've had a very, very busy busy week um come yesterday I was just feeling like I was needing that break and I was just feeling overwhelmed and and knowing that if I didn't take this day off today that I wouldn't be able to give my best work and that's another thing clients deserve your best work so it's important to listen to to, your, to how you're feeling to you know be mindful of that and to be self-aware in order to, to, to make sure that you're providing the best work during these times. So I think it's all about like for mental, to promote my mental resiliency, I've been more self-aware. If at the end of the day, I'm feeling tired, I'll do more things that I know will make me feel re-energized, re whether that's going for a walk, going for a hike, going up to see a waterfall but it's all about listening, engaging how you're feeling to make sure that you're not, you're, you're not draining yourself in, in the process of all of this because you need to make sure that you are keeping on top of yourself, like on top of things so that months from now, because you, we don't know how long this COVID-19 will, will last. Like it's life change. Like it's nothing's going to go back to how it was. So it's about adapting and learning in ways that, work for you but also ways that you're able going to be able to like spread that out that you're not just going to go 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 because this is going to be a long while until things get back to somewhat normal and things will never go back to the way they were so I think it's all about learning new ways of of you know taking care of yourself in order to promote that resiliency throughout the next few months years however long it takes to kind of get back to not get back to where we were, but to get back to somewhat kind of a normalcy. Something important that I've learned is it is important to reach out to other colleagues and other, like your supervisor when you're struggling. It's important not to struggle alone. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's so important to connect and to let other people know how you're feeling. It's important to remember that although other people's case loads may be just as heavy as yours, Everybody is in the same boat and everybody kind of has an understanding of what you're going through. So to have that communication piece has been huge and something that I've learned that's important when you're working in this field of work is to make sure that you're connecting with the right people and, and, and not isolating yourself and taking on, taking on more than you can. One thing that I've also learned that's important is to it's okay to say no if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you have too much on your plate and somebody asks you if you're able to do this and it just doesn't fit your schedule or it, it, you just cannot handle in it and it, you can't handle taking it on, then it is okay to say no when you're 
when you're feeling like you can't.